Receiving a homebrewed magic item that's tailor-made just for you is one of the coolest parts about being a player, but as a DM, homebrewing that magic item is just as much fun. However, I always worry that it's not balanced enough, and maybe that I haven't thought everything through. So in this case, we're going to use ChatGPT with a prompt that I came up with, and we're going to generate some magic items here. We can get very specific here, and this might be a little bit of a longer video. We're going to go into some things. I'm going to generate some cool AI art so you guys can see what I have in mind. This is going to be a fun video. So let's get into the prompt. Some of my other videos, some of this will seem very familiar, but we're going to blast through this as quickly as you can. But if you want to check the chapters below, feel free to skip past this prompt. I'll put everything down in the description. Let's go over this real quick. There's a couple of very key phrases here. I'm a dungeon master running Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition. That gives ChatGPT a ton of information. I'm looking to create some ma original magic items. Now this is important, otherwise it's gonna start recommending official magic items as part of this, and that's not what we're looking to do. We're not looking to get stuff that's already made, we're looking to homebrew. These should not be official content, just reinforcing that concept. These can be armor, weapons, trinkets, or potions. Now, I left out spell scrolls because those are spell scrolls, and we're not generating spells at the moment. We might save that for another video. I consider a magic item to have the following attributes. A name, because what's a magic item without a cool name? A rarity, and it does understand this. Physical description, because you gotta describe it, it's gotta look cool, it's gotta sound cool, all this stuff. Magical abilities, obviously the, the meat of the whole thing requires attunement. This is important. It's also something that you could figure out yourself, but let's let ChatGPT do the hard work for us. And then if it has any charges, it will add them here. And then we ask it if it understands. So let's go ahead and give this to ChatGPT, make sure that it understands the prompt, which of course it's going to, because it's smarter than I am. I wasn't expecting it to already generate some, but sometimes it does that. Sometimes it just confirms that it knows what you're talking about. Other times it automatically just starts making them. Let's read one or two of these, and then we're gonna get more into how we can specify things. So let's read through the Echo Blade. This is kind of a cool concept. So it's very rare, which I kind of read through this. I feel like that's appropriate. You guys can make your own judgments because this is all homebrew. The rarity is really gonna depend on whether you just wanna give it to your characters or not. So do with that what you will. So the physical description, the long sword appears normal at first glance, but when swung, it leaves behind a translucent after image. The hilt is wrapped in black leather and the blade itself has a soft ethereal glow, which is pretty cool. I could totally see this thing just kind of like, you know, you get that. It's It paints a good evocative image. Magical abilities. This weapon has the finesse property. When you hit a creature with the echo blade, you can choose to make the echo strike again. The second strike uses the same attack roll and deals half the damage of the first strike. This ability can be used twice per long rest. So this is already considered a ton of different factors. Number one, like it, it clarifies. Like I hit with the thing. Oh, do I have to roll a second? No, you don't have to roll a second dice. It's already going to just hit again and it's going to do half the damage. So you're not just obliterating things with like double damage here. And you can only use it twice a day, and it requires attunement. This feels appropriate to me. Um, let me know in the comments if you feel otherwise. But to me, that one sounds very good. Let's talk about the Flask of the Fire Breather, and then we'll generate some of our own stuff. Because this one actually just looked cool. This is an uncommon item, which actually does a good amount of damage. It's a brass flask sealed with a ruby stopper. It appears to constantly have smoke seeping from the seal. Drinking from the flask allows the user to unleash a breath of flame as per the Dragonborn's breath weapon feature, which is fire type, dealing 46 fire damage on a failed dexterity saving throw, half as much on a successful one, the damage increases to 5d6 at 11th level and 66 at 6th level. It does not require attunement and it has three charges, which regain 1d3 at dawn. Now, something that you'll notice here is it did not actually give you the DC. You'll have to figure that out yourself. However, in uh, other ones that we're going to be doing here, it will actually include the DC. Problem is it doesn't know anything about your characters here. So let's just jump ahead. And I'm going to tailor these for the players that I have in my current campaign. I call it the Lands of Dimidium. If you haven't checked it out on the channel, you should go check it out. But we're going to pick, I have an arcane trickster rogue. His name is Alessio. Currently, he's level eight. So I'm going to ask for a magic item that would be appropriate for a level 9 Arcane Trickster Rogue. So let's go ahead and type that in. While this is generating an answer, let's just kind of talk about this. So I'm generating this for a Rogue. Some of the things that it's going to put out are going to be a bit cliche. It's going to always be like, oh, well, it's a Rogue. They probably like to sneak around. That's why I put the Arcane Trickster. I wanted to give it some more information about the Rogue that it's you know, generating this for. If there's more information, let's say that it really matters to me the fact that they're an orc. In this case, the guy's an Eladrin. But still, let's just say he's an orc. And somehow I want that to matter. Because maybe I want the weapon that it generates to be somehow more like like a 
club or like something more orcish just looks a little bit more violent something like that that is something that chat gpt will be able to deal with but let's see what this put out so whispering wind daggers they're rare which is appropriate for a level nine physical description these twin daggers are made of a semi-transparent wind-like material that is weightless to the touch the hilts are wrapped in dark leather and the blades emit a soft hum when drawn that sounds pretty cool Magical abilities. The daggers are considered magical for the purpose of overcoming resistance, blah, 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 plus one bonus to attack and damage. When the attuned user throws one of these daggers, it doesn't leave their hand. Instead, a spectral dagger is created in midair and thrown. While the real dagger remains in the user's hand, the spectral dagger disappears after the attack. That's really cool. As a bonus action, the attuned user can activate the daggers to gain advantage on the next dexterity sleight of hand or dexterity stealth check they make before the end of their next turn. So let's just think about that. So as a bonus action, the attuned user can activate the daggers to gain advantage. So it's, it just gives them a little extra roguey things. I was trying to think of visually what that looks like, but it doesn't matter. It's still a cool bonus action that they'll be happy to have. Of course, that requires attunement for sure. And the advantage ability can be used three times, regaining all expended charges daily at dawn. Okay, it's also gonna give us a little description of why it created this. These are okay, I didn't ask it for this, but it does give you a little bit of an idea of what it was thinking when it created the item, and it makes some sense. It definitely took into account the fact that they're an arcane trickster and all that, so that's, that's pretty cool. All right, let's think about something a little bit different. I like magical items rather than weapons. I actually like them all, but magical items are kind of cool. So let's ask for something that would be a magical item that you could find in like a magical store that would be appropriate for level nine. So it's gonna spit out the peculiar pocket watch. Now this is an interesting item and it actually uses a spell that I don't see used a ton called augury. Augury is a spell that basically it gives you insight into what the DM is thinking. And it lets you basically ask a question and then you get a sign of either the results are good, the results are bad, the results are both good and bad, or the results are unclear. Now, here's the one thing. This is a great item. I just don't see the players ever using it because they never think to ask questions that would actually prevent them from getting into danger. <laughs> but in this case, this of course, this is a pretty good item. It's got augury. You can use it once a day. Um, as a bonus action, you get advantage on an intelligence uh, investigation or wisdom insight check and uh, does not require attunement. So you could actually use this, hand it to your friend, and then they can use it too because it can be used up to three times a day. So this is actually a, a pretty interesting trinket and I could see this one being in a magic shop I want another one though let's generate another one I'm literally gonna say can you generate another one now this is an interesting one too so this is the sphere of whispering shadows it's a rare item basically what it lets you do is create kind of this 20 foot radius sphere of this like eerie dark whispering environment and the idea is to give you disadvantage on uh, wisdom perception check so maybe you roll this thing into a room and you set it to go off and then you kind of sneak through as as a rogue maybe either way this this is a interesting utility item with um, a, a bonus action as well or sorry it has an additional action where you can speak somebody's name and it will kind of direct you towards them as long as they're within a mile of you so it does have a little extra which makes sense because it's a rare item but let's let's see how it does with common items because i like to give my players some sort of magic items pretty early on maybe with the first little dungeon that they're in at level like two maybe they beat some big bad bugbear and then they get a magical item so let's say a weapon from a bugbear that would be appropriate for level two all right so i specifically asked for a common magical item that belonged to a bugbear that would be appropriate for level two i wanted to say common because you could kind of give common magic items to your people and it's not really going to affect anything and common items by default are really going to have like a cantrip or maybe some sort of permanent like color changing effect it's not really going to affect the game but it's going to let them know that they're in a magical world so let's see what this came up with bugbear's bead of gluttony <laughs> I already like this. It's a small, worn bead made from bone etched with crude symbols. It looks as if it's been gnawed on repeatedly. Once per day as an action, the user can swallow the bead, which is unpleasant but not harmful, to feel fully nourished and satisfied as if they had eaten a full day's meals. The bead reappears next to the user's sleeping area the following morning. That is just really interesting. And and I could kind of see that. Like a bugbear, you know, he's, he's there with a whole bunch of goblins who are probably starving anyway. They're unhappy, but he's well fed. 
maybe he's stronger than everybody else. And it's because he's got this little bead, and he just eats it, and it randomly appears next to him, which is kind of gross. Maybe you find this next to a sleeping pad after you've beaten the bugbear. And it's just while they're investigating the room that was clearly the sleeping quarters. So something like that makes perfect sense. Let's go ahead and go one step further, though. I want a legendary item. And I want this item to have lore behind it. So not only am I going to ask for a legendary item, I'm going to give it a few parameters of things that I want, like what kind of character it's going to be for, uh, what level it's going to be for. But I'm also going to ask it to generate some lore behind that item and why it exists. So I've asked, can you generate a legendary item that would be good for a level 15 bard? That's a little low for a legendary, but it's like right on the cusp. I would also like to know the lore behind the item and how it came into existence. Now, I'd actually thought about this for a little bit, which I'm excited about. This is the Lyre of the Celestial Maestro, which is already on the right path. It's legendary. It's the exquisitely crafted lyre is made of ethereal star-infused crystal, which is interesting. The strings are strands of pure light that create harmonic tones when plucked. When played, the lyre emits a soft celestial glow. Okay, so that's a description. That's not a great description. I might actually ask it to make a cooler description. So let's do that in a minute. The magical abilities, the lyre grants a plus three bonus to spell attack rolls and to the saving throw DCs of the bard's spells. That's pretty hefty. The bard can use the lyre to cast the spells fly, invisibility, levitate, major image, and teleport without expending a spell slot. Each of these abilities can be used once per long rest. That's awesome. <laughs> the Lyre can be used as a spellcasting focus, of course. It does uh, retire, require attunement by a bard. The individual spell abilities of Lyre re each have one charge, blah blah blah, they recharge. Okay, so the lore. The Lyre of the Celestial Maestro was not crafted by mortal hands, but was the creation of... Uh, can't say that. Eilister... So for the lore, the Lyre of the Celestial Maestro was not crafted by mortal hands, but was the creation of Forgotten Realms god name that it's hard to say. Uh, the drow goddess of song and dance, she forged the instrument from celestial crystal and imbued it with the light of the stars themselves. It was intended as a gift for her most devoted follower, a drow bard who had forsaken the dark ways of his kin to spread hope and joy through music. However, the lyre was lost when the bard was betrayed and killed by his own people. Jealous of his favor with the goddess, Elistre, uh, I think, is in her sorrow scattered the followers' ashes among the stars, and the lyre was lost to the mortal realms. Centuries later, the lyre was just rediscovered by a, bard of a band of adventurers who had ascended to the heavens on an epic quest. Recognizing its power and beauty, they returned it to the mortal world, where it was passed through the hands of many powerful bards since. Despite its celestial origin and power, the lyre still carries a tone of melancholy for its original fallen master. That is like the perfect amount of lore behind a legendary item. Especially if you, as the DM, want to make this fit into your world, you can take that and easily ma match that up with whatever's going on in your world. But like I said, I wanted to have a better description. So I'm going to say, can you write a better physical description? Already, this is spitting out multiple paragraphs worth of descriptive text that I can then read and then distill down to kind of what I want to describe it as. But this just gave you so much stuff. Um, I'm not going to read through it here. But this is kind of how you can generate legendary items. Now, if I wanted to, I could even say, who are some other people who have had this item previously other than that drow follower? And it will come up with things, especially if I utilize the NPC template that I, uh, the prompt that I have talked about in some of my previous videos. So let's make something new. So I'm going to ask one more thing of it here. I'm going to ask it to actually generate three different magic items for one of my characters who like to base his character off of Zoro. So he named his character Anomio, who is a gnome fighter. Um, and it's going to generate three different things that it thinks that you want. So you can spit these out fairly quickly if you want to just have some choices or if you have something in mind. I've already shown you how you can tailor it to that. But in this case, uh, it's going to do the Saber of the Sable Fox... Um, which is a rapier, uh, do do do. It's got stylized fox with ruby eyes as a, um, on the hilt. It's a plus two sword. Um, it can invoke fox's cunning. And, uh, you know, then you've got the cloak of the night phantom, and then you have mask of the mysterious fox. So even these kind of keep in mind the theme that I was going for, which, like I said at the very beginning of the episode, there's nothing cooler than having a magic item tailor-made just for you. 
I hope that you're starting to realize that generating magic items through ChatGPT really comes down to just asking the right questions. None of this is very hard. I'm just a guy who's spending a lot of time with ChatGPT. I love tech, I love D&D, and I'm trying to combine the two. So I hope that you've been enjoying these videos. Please let me know in the comments below if there's any topics that you'd like to see covered. I have nine more to go through <laughs> that I've already conceptualized, and there's probably plenty more that I can do. This is one I really wanted to do, and it was one of the more requested ones. So if you are enjoying these videos, please consider subscribing to the channel. We do a live play every Monday night, or pretty much every Monday night, at 9.30 p.m. Eastern Time. So come join us. It'd be really fun to see you here. But otherwise, just subscribe to the channel. I have plenty more of these coming, and I hope to see you there. Cheers.